I like big loops, and I cannot lie. And today on the Ham Radio Crash Course, we're going to talk about a very cool one, the F Loop by Chameleon Antennas. Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. I appreciate it. Go ahead and click that like button. If you haven't already, click subscribe and click that bell because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you. So today we are looking at the Chameleon F loop antenna. This is a magnetic loop antenna, meaning it is favoring the magnetic side of the antenna electromagnetic equation. This antenna will go from 10 meters all the way down to 80 meters in the base kit configuration. There are two kits, the base and then what's called the total kit. And we're looking at the total kit today. But the only difference between those two kits is the addition of a separate larger radiating loop and larger coax loop. You can still go all the way down to 80 meters with the base kit. With the ICOM 705 on the market, I've been getting asked a lot of questions about loop antennas. And the reason is, is that loop antennas are resonant antennas. They're adjustable to get you right in that sweet spot and will work just fine with the 705. Further, loop antennas are portable. This antenna system, although it has the accessory aluminum loop on it, this particular one uses LMR400 for the large outer loop, which means it can be coiled, compressed, and put into a bag. Chameleon antennas comes with the bag that has all the parts in it you'd want to use when you're in the field. And you can pare this down or bring different parts along with you depending on what you want to do in the field or at home. Now the compelling reason why you might want to look into a loop for portable or you know whatever aspects of ham radio is that this is all it is. It's the base box, there is a center mast, a radiating loop at the top, and then the outer loop. That's all there is to it. And basically it only needs to be as high as the larger loop is tall in diameter. So being on a table like this, that's all you need for height. There's no radials required. There's no other equipment needed, just your coax feed line and you're off and running. An interesting part of magnetic loop antennas is that they have a very high Q. The Q spike or the SWR range of the antenna is extremely narrow. If you think to a dipole, dipoles are real wide and they gradually get wider as or they go, the SWR goes up as you go across the band. Well, a loop antenna is extremely narrow. What that allows you to do is basically null out everything above and below where your frequency of operation is, effectively helping you to avoid interference, which can often be good if you're in a commercial environment or a suburb environment that is very noisy. Now, just to, to give you a bit of a demonstration on how this uh, works, I have the antenna switched on the A bank, which allows it to go all the way down to 80 meters and up to the higher side of 40 meters. And if I just turn the knob here, watch the 705. The signals are gone. In fact, that's exactly how you tune a loop like this. You just turn the capacitor until the noise comes back. And I'm in a very uh, noisy environment. So the noise is, is pretty prominent, but it gives you a really good understanding of, of how loops work. You adjust the tuning knob of the capacitor until you get maximum noise. And then you use something like an SWR meter built into a radio to tell you where your SWR is at. And if you're not where you wanna be, you just simply go in and give it a little nudge either way to fine tune it some more. And that's kind of how loops work. Another thing to note about loops is they are affected by metallic structures around them, so make sure you place your loop in an area that is free of metal. If you have it outside, uh, you want to get it away from wires, other antennas, the house if it's metal on the outside, or roofs that have a large amount of weather, uh, metal, or a car even for that matter. That will drop your noise floor uh, significantly and also get you a better match generally. So I've been testing the Chameleon Loop for a little while now, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I have actually done a couple of tests using a mode called Whisper. It is a beaconing mode, which gives me an accurate representation of how my signal is propagating in and away from my home. You know, there was a comment not too long ago that I got uh, asking me to do all my tests with single sideband. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because single sideband does... Uh, really good stuff on video. People like watching single sideband. 
But one of the reasons why I use Whisper and FT8 is it gives you an idea of how far you're getting out. And what I mean specifically is you're going to get a result or a report on your beacon way out further than your antenna would be able to work or your signal coming out of your radio would be able to work if it was just single sideband. Using Whisper, if you see a report back that says, hey, zero or up, you know, five, 10, whatever dB up, well, those are, that is a propagation path between those two locations where single sideband will work generally considering the power you're putting out too. But when it gets down into the lower end of the negatives, right, 20, negative 20, negative 18, then you might have to look at things like FT8 or JSA call to make your signal get to where it's going. They're all valid modes of operation, but we can tell really quickly using something like Whisper that if voice comms is even possible. So beaconing modes are always really, really helpful and really, really good. I will post a link in the description to Ham Radio DX. He did a wonderful video on discussing why using beaconing modes like Whisper to judge how well your signal is getting out is really effective for all ham radio, but for voice comms, because it gives you a really good identifier where your path is open, in what direction you should be pointing your RF if you have gain capability, and when is the right time to try and make a voice call. So check the video out in the description. Thank you. So my testing that I'm gonna show you today with this antenna consists of not only its assembly, but then operating it at five watts output using Whisper. And we're going to compare the various parts of the antenna because this is a configurable antenna. I'm gonna show you the parts that come in the bag right now, but just keep that in mind as you buy kind of one antenna and you have multiple options depending on the level of kit you buy and what accessories you add to that kit. Okay, so the antenna comes with this cool Condor tactical bag. Uh, it is very large. You can fit way more than the antenna in this and there are lots of different compartments. Here's one big compartment. I usually keep the instruction manual in this guy. And in the center part here, you have a bunch of LMR 400 coils, right? Like this, you get one extra radiating loop, which we'll talk about in a second. I'll leave you with this too, before we talk about the, the parts that it comes with. You think this is a duffel bag? No, it is not. It's also a backpack. This has a zippable bottom hatch here. You roll this up and it stows out of the way with Velcro and it has straps. So it's a backpack too. And here's an extra loop, we'll talk about that. All right, so keep that in mind. Very cool bag that they throw in with the kit. You will get way more than what you need to put the antenna away if you go with this kit. So if you go with the base kit, you are gonna get two coils of LMR 400, two coils. This will, one coil will take you from 10 meters down to 40 meters. If you attach two of the LMR 400 together with a barrel connector that comes in the kit, you will go from 10 all the way down to 80 and all the bands in between. So that's very effective. If you want, you have, uh, if you know you're only gonna operate 40 meters in the field, well, you only need to take one loop. If you know you're gonna go down to 80 or you're gonna do 60, bring two loops. Now, if you go with the base model, you're going to get the smaller radiating loop that has the coax connection. This is where your coax directly connects into the antenna, and that's all there is to it. If you go with the total kit option, then you get a sec or a third LMR 400. This one is much longer and much bigger, and it comes with a larger radiating loop, which I have on the antenna right now. This will get you higher efficiency from 60 meters through 15 meters. So if you like to play on 60, 40, 20, and all the bands in between there and 15, you may wanna go with the booster option, which is a part of the total kit. And I almost forgot, of course, it comes with coax as well. This coax has ferrite chokes applied to it. That'll help you tame some noise too, depending on your situation. So yeah, also part of the kit. And obviously I was showing it off a bit in the beginning of the video. I have the large whole loop aluminum hole loop attached to the F loop right now. This 
adds even an extra level of efficiency on top of what you would get with the booster kit. This is a standalone accessory that you can buy off of the Chameleon website. I will post a table somewhere over here that you guys can see, and you'll see the numbers of the efficiency numbers change depending on if you're going with the standard LMR 400 loop, the longer, bigger booster loop with the larger radiating loop, or the aluminum um, whole loop. And largely the reason why, this is what I'm told, this is what I understand to be true, that the skin effect, the actual surface of this loop is what adds to the efficiency of the loop antenna when you go with the accessory whole loop option. All right, enough talking. Let's take this out into the field, my backyard, and play around with transmitting on setup and getting it out on whisper. Now the heart and the soul of a loop antenna is gonna be this control box, which houses the capacitors. You can see there are frequency tick marks along all the way down to 10 meters and then up into the 80 meter range. Chameleon antennas have these separated in an A and a B. So you would be on the A side for the low frequencies through 40, and then you'd go on the high side to go from the high side of 40 down to 10 meters. How this works is you pick a frequency on your radio and you would use some kind of tuning mode or some kind of tone generator. Uh, I sometimes will use AM or FM modes, something with a constant carrier. And you will watch the SWR display on the radio and start rotating the dial until you see the SWR drop. The F-loop box with the capacitor control has multiple mount points for tripods and also a hole. So what I'm using is a simple chameleon tripod that came with the P-loop. I'm just gonna screw it into place here. So now we build off of this. The next thing we're gonna need is the vertical mount that controls the inner loop or the smaller loop, however you wanna call it. This threads onto the top. Now, depending on which loop you're going to erect, again, the kit comes with three. You're gonna use the smaller diameter loop or the larger loop. If you're gonna do the booster, you're gonna use the larger one. And if you're doing the single loop, you're gonna use the smaller one. So we're gonna start with the single loop, which is kind of what you would use in a lot of field situations. This just screws onto the tripod mount, right like that. Note that the connection for your coax is here. So I'll fix that now. The coax comes in the kit. There are ferrites that have been added as a choke screws right into the bottom here. Now I'm gonna test fit this a bit by extending this to about what I think it's gonna be. We'll adjust it later. The reason I do that though is I want the coax to go behind the loop. I wanna take some Velcro strap and make it connect to the backside so that the coax goes up and underneath the loop. That was something that was confirmed by Carl, the creator and owner of Chameleon, as well as the creator of this loop. And that was his recommendation is make sure it goes along the backside. These Velcro straps that they come with should be reused as you're building out. Okay, just kind of open it up a bit. Rest it on the top. Take your Velcro strap, go over the top with it. Doesn't need to be very tight, just snug fit. Okay, now, pretty simple. The legs of the LMR 400 simply go down to the bottom of the loop can, uh, capacitor box. I kind of jiggle the body of the cable as I'm tightening and then adjust your tripod until you get a loop shape. We're done. Now you just basically connect it to your radio and you're good to go. Again, no radials, no extra anything required to make the setup work. So adjust your coax a little bit. Now take your feed line and go hook it to your radio. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crank the volume on this. I'm gonna go down to 40 meters Actually, let's start it. We're gonna go down to 20 meters. I'm on 20 meters right now, and I'm just going to set it to B, and I'm gonna start rotating the Delrin antenna capacitor control. Let's see if we got it. That's about it. Now, because I have the capability to do this on the G90, it has an antenna sweep capability. So I'm gonna make sure I have the tuner off. Always make sure you have the tuner off when you're using a magnetic loop. We'll do a check here with the SWR sweep. And sure enough, I'm pretty much right there, but I'm gonna move it a little bit. You get really good at touching, uh, kind of feeling <laughs> where you're making your adjustment. Yeah, almost. That's pretty good. Although I've gone a little too far now. Now just a touch. 
and that'll do it. So now I am tuned up for doing FT8 or you know whisper or whatever digital mode I want to do. You would just simply adjust it after you set the frequency you're going to be operating on. Another fantastic way to tune a loop like this is when you're running whatever software you want to run, click the tune button and go to your radio and, and adjust the loop to, mat, to drop the SWR as far down as you can. All right, so with the single loop connected, we're gonna start a whisper test. We're gonna drop the power down to five watts. So we'll let this do its thing for a little while. We'll check back in about 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes, three transmissions of whisper. I got picked up in the middle of Russia, uh, all over the United States area, and that's just on the single loop on 20 meters. We're gonna go to the booster next, and we're gonna try that again and see if we can get out a little bit further. All right, we got the bigger diameter loop, much bigger outer loop. Remember, this is all LMR 400. All right, so same thing as before. This is much bigger though. So find the center. It's often a good idea to add a second coa or a second piece of Velcro to hold the loop on the inner loop. And then you can just play with these until you get it about right. <laughs> a little floppy, but like that. Maybe we'll adjust this up a little bit. Okay. Now let's retune for 20 meters and we'll conduct our whisper test again. With the loop set up and the radio tuned, I am left to just pour through the instruction manual. Great instructions, by the way. Uh, really nicely done and you can download all of them off of Dropbox. With the booster attached, we see some similar signals, but we're getting much further, continental US, a lot further out. Let's keep this test and party going. Next, the aluminum hole one piece loop. Connecting the whole aluminum loop is pretty easy. It forgoes the LMR 400 connections and it goes direct to bolts with wing nuts. And so you just use those to connect it to the body. You'll know you have it right because the PL259 coax connections have a little strip of metal that connects to the point in which the flats of the loop should be connected. So how does the aluminum loop do? Pretty well. I, I would say it's probably the most effective efficiency wise, but I think we expected that. You're also going to radiate a little bit further with the aluminum loop. So a couple of odds and ends here. The loop antennas and, and loops in general are going to be more towards your lower power QRP type transmitters. You can get about 20, 25 watts output on single sideband, a little bit less if you're running digital. Chameleon sells something called a power compensator, which connects right here on the side of the LMR 400 connector. And that will increase your output to about 40 watts output. So this is generally designed to be more of a, an outdoor portable QRP antenna, because again, you are gonna go have to go hands-on with it, right? Which I think you're getting the idea that this is really for packing to where you wanna go, setting up pretty quickly, and then you know having some fun with radio. What are my thoughts on the F-Loop. I think it's great. I think it's nice that it is a modular antenna system. It's obviously high quality. At the time that I've recorded this, I have operated with five different chameleon antennas and they all are of very high quality. They're very well made, very, very good materials, and they perform as expected. Carl, who is the creator of many of these antennas and the creator of chameleon antennas itself, the write-ups that he provides in the instructions really goes to a deep, deep degree in explaining how the antenna works, how to get them to work the most effective way. You've seen my wire antennas that I've done. He spends a lot of detail and a lot of time to explain how to set them up correctly to make them work for you. And this is no different. It's a really nice antenna. It takes you all the way down to 80 meters, which is more of a rarer thing with loops, you know, as far as the ones that are on the market. So it's definitely a try it. If you're interested in a loop, again, if you have a 705, you're thinking about an antenna that you might want to match to it, or maybe a G90 with the power compensator. If you wanted to do digital, for instance, that would work. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Tell me what you think of loops. Maybe you own an F loop or a P loop, which is the portable loop. I've also reviewed that. I'll post a link in the description. That is also a fantastic antenna as well. I would love to hear your thoughts on the F loop. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, 
If you haven't, please, I'd appreciate it. If you give me that thumbs up, click subscribe and click that bell because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.